hit the record button and the mute button and, and welcome you all to uh, another session of developing unwavering faith a great opportunity for everyone uh, to just hear a little bit every every Tuesday night uh, on, on what the word of God says about the role faith plays and how we can grow stronger and stronger in it Reverend Dickerson you ready to go uh, mute button I need the mute button Yes, Pastor, grace and peace to you. Amen. Good evening to you. Grace and peace to all the Zionites and their families who may be online, as well as all the guests who may be online. I pray all is well with you and your families. I pray that you had a blessed and wonderful day. And the Lord is blessing you and keeping you while you're going through whatever it is you may be dealing with at this time. And so as I invite, uh, welcome you to our Tuesday night session of Developing Unwavering Faith, where we're coming out of James 1.6. But let them ask in faith without wavering. If you have your Bibles this evening, please turn to me, turn with me to a fami very familiar passage of scripture, Mark chapter 5, starting with the 25th verse. Mark chapter 5, starting with the 25th verse. <clears throat> and it reads: Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians, and she had spent all that she had, and was not and no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But the disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus says to her, daughter, your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your affliction my brothers sisters family and friends and you may be on the line this evening i'd like to bring forth a word this evening and before i give you the title uh, this word is coming from my heart up to a this is for all of you but I know there's folks who are really going through the sickness and disease situation, have gone to their doctors and maybe have gone to go and get a follow-up appointment. And the follow-up appointment uh, was not to his or her liking and did not get the favorable results that you were looking for. And so this message is for everybody, but I'm really zoning in for those who are struggling with an ailment at this present time and without, uh, and as I give you my title, you'll see what I mean in a minute. And what I wanna talk about this evening, overcoming a setback, hold on to your faith. Overcoming a setback, hold on to your faith. Second Timothy, 2, 3 says this, thou therefore endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. While you're going through what you're going through, yes, things are going to be hard sometimes, and we're encouraged by Timothy, therefore, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. We don't always get to deal with pleasant things in our lives, and so we're going to have to endure. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, and fight the good fight of faith overcoming a setback hold on to your faith overcoming just means to gain the victory 
win, conquer, plan to overcome by any means possible. My brothers and family friends, during our Christian journey, we will be faced with all kinds of trouble and challenges. We will have to deal with and put up with and endure trials and tribulations, persecutions and afflictions by way of sickness and disease, financial trials, marital trials, family and relationship trials, you name it, you and I will experience various trials and tribulations while we're here on earth. Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, himself says, in this world or during your lifetime, you will have to endure trials and tribulations and, and overwhelming crisis. I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My brothers and family, friends, with that being said, and with you being aware of all of this, you have decided, you know, over the, this time that I, we, you've been with us on this uh, developing on the wavering faith session and over the year and almost, yeah, almost a year and a half now we've been doing this. You have decided, hopefully and prayerfully, uh, that you're going to walk by faith and give it all to God, no matter what you're dealing with, trusting him and leaning on him instead of on your own understanding, believing no matter what you hear, no matter what you see, and no matter what you feel, you are going to stand, having done all to stand in faith. Whatever you are dealing with will turn out for your good and in your favor. This was what I believe you are believing and standing in faith on. However, what do you do when you have been diagnosed with a sickness? And though you were given uh, that negative report, you have prayed and you are believing and claiming your healing, believing by faith and in faith with boldness and confidence of God's word, you are healed. And while you are believing and standing in faith, claiming your healing, while waiting for your healing to physically manifest, you go for your follow-up doctor's appointment. You receive a negative report from the doctor that the cancer is back. And I, I zone in on cancer because that seems to be the biggest thing that folks are dealing with, but it could have been anything. You put your, whatever you're going through in there. The cancer is back. And not only is it back, the cancer has grown and has been metastasized to other body parts. Now, my brothers and family friends, no doubt about it. Hearing that report is scary and very frightening and heartbreaking to hear. Yes, it is, and I get it, and I understand. Don't want to hear it myself. Though it will be easier said than done to continue to stand believing and claiming your healing, realizing you must do your best to do your to, to, uh, best of your ability to stay in faith with the understanding that you have just suffered a setback. My brothers and family friends, that's what you receive. You just had a setback. No matter how much we have faith, no matter how much we're believing for, every now and again in our lives when we're dealing with something and as we're making progress, there's going to be times maybe you're going to have a setback where you didn't get the news that you were expecting to to, to receive or something didn't happen that you were expecting to happen. Maybe you, you, you were making advancements and striving in your job and you, you may, maybe you just got a, a, a big promotion and all of a sudden the company decides to have layoffs and your name is in the layoff category. And so you get that call and you get lost, laid off. What is that? That's a setback. My brothers and family friends, a setback is nothing more than what it is. It's a setback. And so now you are thinking, what am I going to do with that news? What do I do now? And that's understandable. The, 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 the worry, the doubt, the concern, yes, is understandable and will kick in. And it will kick in really hard if we allow it to. Well, my brothers and family friends, I'm here to encourage you to all who are going through, to all who are going through a setback. But mostly, most in generally, 
and, and particularly to those, because to me, sickness and disease is the number one challenge to our faith for those who went to the doctor and got a negative report. Well, the answer to the question can happen two ways and it can be handled in two ways. As far as what do you do now? You can either throw up your hands, cave in and quit. Now listen, I'm ministering and I'm teaching, but this is real talk. So this is my heart to you, amen? Act like, I know we're all, you're all hearing me, but act like I came to your house or me and you are having a one-on-one. -on -one. This is exactly what I will tell you to do. This is what I will exactly will encourage you to do, even if we were on one-on-one. -on -one. You can throw up your hands, cave in or quit and quit. Or, or you can, after you get yourself together from the shock of hearing the negative news, and yes, I agree and I believe it will be shocking to hear that news and is shocking and is very disturbing. You could, but or, and you can be stubborn in your faith by holding on to your faith, by digging your heels in, by taking your stand and keep doing what you were doing. Keep on believing, keep on claiming your healing in spite of what you were just told, in spite of how it might seem impossible for you to keep going on in faith because it's not going to be easy and it's not easy. It's easy to take the easy way out and cave in and quit. But what else are you going to do? You caving in and quitting is not going to make your healing come any faster or any quicker or even get healed at all. No, do we have to somehow, some way, find it within yourself to stand, having done all the stand. And while I'm saying it, saying this to you, I feel for you, I'm praying for you, uh, I, 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 I really feel, feel that, and this is why I decided to give out this message, because I know folks are dealing with setbacks. They're getting this news, and oh my goodness, what do I do now? I'm doing everything as far as faith is concerned. What do I do now? Understand this. It is just, I say it again, a setback. Uh, and I am giving you this message to, to all who are enduring this experience in your life that when you have a setback, don't take a step back, get ready for your comeback. Yes, you can waddle in what you're going through. Yes, 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 I know my brothers, sisters, family, friends, it's heavy. Yes, I know it's troublesome. I, I know it's very frightening and it's very scary. And this is what the devil wants you to do, to fall into that category. And yes, it's easy to do that and, and you know, and, and you know, it can happen to anybody, and yep, yep, it's, it's human nature. But I'm a faith man, it's true and true, true and through, amen? And, and, and no matter what, I'm standing with you, I'm praying with you, but I want to encourage you to let you know that when you have a setback, don't take a step back, get ready for your comeback. And your comeback is continue, it's going to happen as you continue to believe and trust God. You have no other recourse. You have nothing else you can do to other than the, the medical field, right? So you're you're believing God while you're going through your medical appointments and doing whatever the doctors are helping you to do, but you're believing and trusting God for your faith, and you got to keep on doing it. I say that from sincerely of my heart for you to stand, having all, done all to stand, keep on believing, as I said in previous messages, keep believing God for your breakthrough. A setback is an act or instance of setting back. It is a check in, to progress, it is a, a reverse or defeat. In Mark chapter five, this is why I read that scripture, the woman with the issue of blood, and I'm giving you this passage of scripture to encourage you because this woman with the issue of blood experienced herself a setback. Read the scripture for yourself. You'll see in Mark chapter five, when after she spent all the money on doctors, appointment after appointment for healing, and yet instead of getting better, the text tells us she grew Words, wouldn't you agree that's a set back? But when she saw Jesus in the crowd, she picked herself up, dusted herself off from the self-pity party and went into the crowd saying to herself, as she did, I heard about this man 
And I believe if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole or I shall be healed. Well, my brothers and sisters, friends, and of course, I'm paraphrasing the text. She did exactly what she believed and confessed and stepped out and went through the crowd and acted on what she said and touched the hem of his garment and she was instantly healed or she was healed because I don't want you getting caught up on the instantly healed part. Now, my brothers and sisters, family and friends, I know that Jesus is not here for you to touch his hem, like the woman that issued blood did. But he has left his word for us to touch. But you are touching his hem as you are reading, studying, meditating, confessing, believing and receiving, and acting on his word by continuing to stand in faith. Again, believing and claiming your healing quoting and confessing his word about healing scriptures and about faith as you do. For after all, my brothers and sisters, friends, he is the word of God in the flesh, came down from heaven and has dwelt among us, according to John 1, 14. Again, my paraphrase, I'm paraphrasing there. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage all who are in the sound of my voice whether now or later, who find themselves in this condition, not, uh, not just for a setback in your health, but those who have a setback on their job, as far as a job loss, a setback as far as some kind of marital situation, a setback as far as some kind of relationship with a family member, or, many, or maybe a financial setback, or whatever your setback you are dealing with in your life is, Again, I'm encouraging you, don't take a step back. Get ready for your comeback. Yes, though you may have had a setback, there is still hope for you. As long as you have breath in your body and a heartbeat in your chest, there's still hope for you. Uh, for in spite of your setback, he is still God. Mm -hmm. In spite of your setback, he is still a healer. In spite of your setback, he is still a miracle worker. In spite of your setback, he is still a way maker. And in spite of your setback, his word is still true. And most of all, in spite of your setback, all things are still possible to him, to her, to those, to them, and to you that believe. Why? Because in spite of your setback, there is still nothing too hard for the Lord. So in spite of your setback, my brothers and fine friends, hold on to your faith. Yes, I know. Easier said than done. Keep on trusting the Lord. In spite of your setback, keep on believing for your healing. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. In spite of your setback, keep on claiming your healing, no matter how hard, mm -hmm, and it's going to be hard, how hard it may be to do. This is what you have to do. This is what you must do. Just think about it. There is nothing else you can do but keep believing in faith. Keep standing. Haven't done all to stand before. Hold on to your faith and never, never, never give up. The facts of the doctor's report may be that you have this disease or whatever it is that you're dealing with that is trying to take you out of here. But the truth of the report of the Lord is by his stripes, you are healed. In spite of your setback, hold on to the truth of God's word and hold on to your faith and never, I say again, never, never give up. If you believe, if you really believe, as I borrowed from last week's message, if you really believe, I believe and stand with you that he will see you through. Just like while the Eagles were going through their Super Bowl run, everybody was wearing this t-shirt. It's a Philly thing. My brother, sister, family, friends, it's a faith thing. It's a faith thing. I mean, it's your faith that's going to bring it to pass. It's your faith that's going to help 
will allow the Lord to help you to get through what you're going through. I know it's hard. I know it's earth shattering. I know it's frustrating, but I'm here. This is my job. This is my life assignment. Don't give up. You got to keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. You only have a setback. When you have a setback, do not, don't take a step back. Get ready for your comeback and hold on to your faith. My brothers and friends, before I close, my, this last thing. I remember a few months ago when I first started this, I gave you a, a, a message about don't be faith foolish or faith presumptuous. Meaning just because you're standing in faith, you don't go to the doctor. Yes, you do. You go to your doctor's appointment. You got to do everything the doctor tell you. Listen to them. And then and as you go to the doctors, by faith, do so. By faith, do everything they gave. As you're, you're believing God for your healing, while you're listening to the doctors, while you're taking your medication, but do so by faith. But here's the thing. Here's my point. But make sure you go to the doctors. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how strong in faith you're standing. If something's wrong with you and it's, it's persisting, get to the doctors. Why do I say that to you? Because I have a sad story to tell you. I brought that message to you months ago because I told you a friend of mine, a minister who we were playing golf with, said he had an aunt who refused to go to the doctors because she was believing God and she was believing in divine healing. That's fine. Her right to do so, okay? But she refused to go to the doctors even though she, there was evidence that something was wrong, she was bleeding, y'all, okay? She was bleeding. That's what she, I, I told him I was going to say this. He told me I can use this testimony. He was bleeding. And matter of fact, he called me today to, because to, he knows I do this on Tuesday nights, to encourage everyone to get to the doctor if something don't seem right. Anyway, and what happened? My brother says, fan friends, she's 69 and she just passed. She had, I believe it was, uh, uh, colon cancer or, or uh, urine cancer. But either way, the doctors told him had she first came to him them when it started, they, she would still be here today. My point is, my brothers and final friends, even though we're standing in faith, you still got to go to the doctors. Get checked out. And as you go to doctors, no matter what they tell you, at least you have something now so you know what you're dealing with. And now in faith, you know how to go to God is that and believe God and trust God while you're standing in faith. But most importantly, please, please, please go to the doctors, get your annual checkup, do whatever you got to do to take care of yourself. Listen, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna close. You do not get any extra credit just because you got healed divinely or you got uh, or different from getting healed medically. It doesn't matter how you get healed. The point is to get healed in the name of Jesus. And God is still behind it. Whew, my brothers and fine friends, overcoming a setback. When you have a setback, don't take a step back. Get ready for your comeback. And I'm believing all you are in the sound of my voice is on, on your way for a setback. Don't let the devil lie to you. It ain't going to happen. You just tell him in the name of Jesus, you have the victory over him and he's defeated. And you will take the stand that by Jesus stripes, you are healed. Claim it, believe it, receive it for yourself. When you have a setback, don't take a step back. Get ready for your comeback and hold on to your faith. Let us pray. Our Father and God, thank you for this time. I thank you for this word, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this word because this word is so important when it comes to the area of our health. Lord, that we, yes, every now and then we're going to hear maybe a, get a setback, uh, a report from the doctors. And Father, I'm helping ask you to touch all those in the sour voice that they do not give up, do not cave in and quit, but continue to, in spite of what they're hearing, even though it's hard, that they will continue to trust you for their healing, for they have not seen nothing yet about what you're about to do in their lives. Even in, in, in no matter what the doctor says, continue to stand, having done all to stand. Be with them, touch them, encourage them, uplift them, help them to stand, Lord, while they're waiting for the manifestation of their healing to come to pass. I believe you are a healer still today. And so I'm asking you to touch each and every last person right now who is going through in the area of sickness and disease. And anybody else who's having a setback in any other area, that you will touch them, that you will be with them, that you'll bring it to pass and turn it around in their favor by faith as they continue to stand in spite of the setback that they just had. Be with them. Again, Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you for putting this message in me. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Father, for the victorious life for you for day, uh, of, of, of developing unwavering faith. I pray this message has blessed 
touch and encourage those who are in a sound of voice, whether they're hearing this message now or hearing it later, that whoever hears it, when they hear it, they'll be blessed by it, encouraged by it, uplifted by it, and take their stand, having done all stand in faith, believing you, no matter what, for their healing. Thank you. We praise you. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise for it. Again, we ask you to touch and bless our pastor and his family and all this, our uh, Zion family and their families and guests who are on the line. You know what they're going through. You know what they're dealing with. I'm actually touch each and every last one of them from top of the head to solar bare feet, meat and supply, every single one of their needs. You know what they stand in need of. Bless those who are going through bereavement at this present time. Continue to comfort them and strengthen them. We thank you, Lord, for all you're doing for us, your protection, what you, how that you provide for us, how you bless us and keep us. We thank you. We praise for every blessing you've given us. We do not take it for granted. It's because you that we live, move, and have our being. And we take nothing for granted. And we say thank you. And all your petitions, desires, I ask of you. I ask it in faith, in Jesus' name. And I claim it done by faith. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Remember, my brothers and fine friends, all things are possible to him, the hurt of those that that believe. Why? Because there's absolutely, positively, nothing too hard for the Lord. Never stop praying. Never stop believing. And never, ever give up. And Hold on to your faith. When you have a setback, don't take a step back. Get ready for your comeback. God bless you. God bless you. And I'll talk to you next time. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dixon. Okay, God sir. bless everybody on the prayer line tonight. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. on the prayer line. And uh, again, tomorrow night, we'll be in person on Wednesday night. Get in the word Wednesdays, uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Be with us. We're looking at Matthew 22 through 28. Uh, and, and we uh, pray that the Lord will inspire you to read those chapters and come in, into this Bible study tomorrow night. God bless you all. Have a great night. All right. Thank you. Thank you.